Today on Home Care Heroes, we have Stephen Tweed, who has been organizing mastermind groups around caregiver recruiting and retention. These groups have learned a lot, and you're going to learn a lot on this podcast. Enjoy. Welcome to the Home Care Heroes podcast, featuring trending topics and practical wisdom for success in home care. Here's your host, Ken Accardi. Welcome to Home Care Heroes. Today I have a fantastic guest by the name of Stephen Tweed. Stephen is uh, one of the first per- people I met when I joined the home care industry in the early 2010s. And he is one of the top consultants in, in home care that really help agencies grow. And just as is consistent with the theme of Home Care Heroes, Stephen's putting a lot of his emphasis in his consulting practice and the offerings that he has around this concept that the agencies who can best recruit and retain caregivers are the agencies that are gonna win in this uh, in this economy and moving forward. So uh, Stephen, thank you for joining us today and welcome to the show. Thank you, Ken, it's great to be back with you and appreciate all that you're doing for these home care companies in the industry. Well, thank you for that. Well, listen, uh, you know, we, we actually talked for a few minutes before we started rolling the camera here. And one thing that really caught my ear was that uh, you've seen the data we all have from Home Care Pulse and that type of thing that a lot of there's you know very high turnover with caregivers and and a lot of that turnover happens in the first 90 days. And you've told me that you know that's something that you're really focusing on and we'll get into this more in detail but I know that you have you know this caregiver quality assurance program, you have caregiver uh, mastermind groups for re- recruiting and retention, but let's kind of drill in. I mean, what are some things that that these owners who are listening today can think about that might help them reduce that uh, loss of caregivers in the first 90 days? Well, as we studied this 90-day turnover, uh, Ken, we came to figure out that, um, you know, the turnover last year in the industry was 64.2%. And of that, 80% happens in the first 90 days. So we, we began to look at, well, what goes on within that first 90 days and and how can we uh, eliminate some of that? And what we learned is that the first big challenge is in fact selection during the hiring process. Because many of those people that leave in the first 90 days actually leave in the first 30 days. And it's because the individual may be a very nice person and a kind and compassionate person, but they're not a good fit for the job of a caregiver or they're not a good fit for the particular client they've engaged with or they're not a good fit for the company and so they they leave and as you know oftentimes these caregivers leave by just no showing uh they just don't show up on the first morning of the first shift or they don't show up uh on the first morning of the second week um other times they are called to take a shift and they just don't respond and the scheduler is not able to find them and track them down and they they basically vanish and so we realize that that a big part of this 90-day retention is about selection. It's about selecting the right people to begin with. And so we're developing a whole module on the caregiver quality selection system to look at interviewing, to look at attitudes and behaviors that make a good caregiver, to look at how we identify compassion, because there's a lot of data that suggests that a caregiver who has this thing we call compassion, which really is empathy for the condition of another person plus the motivation to take some kind of action, to do something about it. So it's not just enough to be empathic about this client who has these multiple issues, but what can I do to help them get past their suffering, whatever that may be. And so the selection piece of it is is a really big part of it. The next part then is balancing their paycheck. That is, the caregiver comes on board with the idea that they want to work a certain number of hours a week and they want to take home a certain number of dollars and that's matched to their expenses. And let's talk for a moment about somebody who wants to work full time, which is 35 to 40 hours a week. And let's say it's 40 hours a week times $10 an hour. Let's use round numbers. So there's you know, $400 a week minus the deduction. So they're going to get a paycheck in the 300 and 
I don't know, $45 a week, let's say. Well, if they if they work their first two weeks and they get a paycheck that's $280, now they're short and they got to make that up somewhere. So they're going to go find hours somewhere else. And if they find another company that can offer them more hours, oftentimes they'll switch their loyalty over there because they need to get that certain number of dollars per week to meet their expenses, to pay the rent, to pay the electric bill, put gas in the car. And so part of our 90-day retention strategy is to find out how many hours a caregiver wants to work, find out their expectations about their paycheck, and then make sure somebody is monitoring that to make sure that they get the hours that they want. And what we saw frequently happening was that somebody would come out of orientation and say, I want to work 40 hours a week. And maybe the first week they only got scheduled for 30. And then the next week they got 35. Uh, and then the next week they lost one of their clients. And so they went from 35 down to 25. But the scheduling coordinator in the office didn't know that because the scheduler doesn't know them yet. They're brand new. They're only on, on the job three or four weeks. And we know the schedulers have their favorite caregivers that they are their go-to people that they can count on. So this new caregiver is not in that uh, visibility yet, and they don't get scheduled. And now two or three weeks go by, and they're only working 25 hours instead of 35 or 40. And then they get their paycheck, and it, and it doesn't work. So they're looking for other work. Um, and 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 what we found is that that the big myth about turnover is that it's about money, and people think it's in the context of the hourly rate. Um, I'm, I'm earning $10 an hour, but I really want to earn $11 an hour. But in reality, it's not so much the hourly rate as it is the actual take-home pay, and does it meet what they need? The second part of it uh, then is to make sure that there is that balance uh, and that they're earning the dollars and getting that the hours that they want. And then the third part of 90-day retention is helping that brand new caregiver feel like they're part of the company, that they're part of a group, that they're valued, that they're appreciated. And so we have an engagement process where we reach out to that new caregiver very frequently during the first couple of weeks and then a little less frequently. But over that 90-day period, we're reaching out and touching that caregiver frequently enough that we know how are they doing, how are they feeling, are there any issues, are there any problems, um, and to let them know that we care about them. And so having a 90-day a retention strategy that encompasses those four major pieces has proven to be successful. And so we've seen people uh, you know, reduce their 90-day turnover by dramatic measurable amounts. Perfect. All right, and Stephen, I was taking notes and I know that the quality selection was one of the one of the four, balancing the paycheck, doing the outreach and communicating, but I missed what the fourth one was. Oh, I'm sorry, there were three. So that, that <laughs> okay, it, perfect. It was the uh, uh, doing a better job of selection, balancing their paycheck and their hours, and then helping them feel uh, in, engaged and helping them feel valued and appreciated. All right, I love that. Yeah, that's that's really, really good and really, really helpful and also a framework that makes a lot of sense. And, and it can actually be the basis of a process. And one other thing that you told me is I know that you have, uh, over the years, you've put together a home care CEO mastermind group concept. And I think you've actually recruited uh, four cohorts in, in those groups. And I know that of your uh, mastermind participants last year that you know, that the vast majority of them grew and that they grew by an average of almost 15%, whereas the industry didn't grow by anywhere near that much. I think the industry grew by under 5% and your mastermind group grew by 15%. And um, so, you know, so first of all, that's an astounding uh, accomplishment for you and everything that you're doing. And that sort of thing, I know just another interesting and not very happy statistic is that the number of caregivers working in our field actually declined last year. I mean, obviously because of COVID related uh, things. And so it, it all really comes down to, you know, helping agencies attract more and have systems in place. Uh, and that's where I kind of wanted to go. You know, when you, when you said the selection, the balancing, and then the outreach, love and, and communication with the caregivers, that really becomes the basis of the system. But one thing you told me was that the agencies that have strong systems 
are the ones that seem to do better. So what um, what are some thoughts about you know systems that maybe they're a smaller agency, they're just coming up on their first million in revenue. What are some things they should think about uh, about some of those systems or operating mechanisms that they maybe don't have yet? Well, as we have studied this whole caregiver quality issue, we've identified what we call the five elements of caregiver quality assurance. Uh, the first element is the caregiver quality company culture. And what we've come to realize is that the best companies in the industry are building a culture that makes them a great place to work. And so we've studied a lot how companies craft their culture. It starts with the leadership style of the CEO or the owner. Uh, and then we look at the core values that guide their decisions and the actions. And the companies that have a clear focus culture tend to have three core values. And then they define the behaviors that go with that. So it's the leadership style of the CEO, the three core values, the behaviors you expect. And so they translate those values into specific behaviors and expectations. And then the fourth is the behavior you permit. And my wife who's an executive coach and professional speaker says, the behavior you permit, you promote. And so, mm -hmm these companies that are working on their culture, and it's not something you do in six months or a year, um, it can go on for years and years and years. And many of the companies in our top 5% mastermind group have a major emphasis on crafting the culture. The second element is the caregiver quality recruiting system. And we see it as a system. It's not a try a bunch of things. It's not a what's the latest shiny, object that we can uh, latch onto, it's understanding the premise of how you reach caregivers and put systems in place to do that over and over and over again. And our research has identified what we call the three-pronged approach to recruiting. Uh, one prong is employee referral programs. And all of our data show that the best place to find high-quality candidates is from other high-quality employees. And most companies say they have an employee referral program, but most of them don't do it very well. Um, and the elements are that you've got to promote your program regularly and you've got to pay a meaningful incentive. And we've got some data around what makes a meaningful incentive. The second part of the recruiting system is in fact online recruiting. And all the data show that the number one source of caregivers is indeed.com. But that same data show that it's one of the more expensive sources in terms of the cost per hire, and it's also the highest turnover of new hires uh, of all the sources in the, in the industry. Um, and so there are other elements of an effective online recruiting system, and everybody has to have one, but what we've seen is too many companies relying only on indeed.com and not other online platforms and they're not changing up their job ads and they're not testing things. They're just refreshing their ad twice a week over and over and over again. And they're getting lots of applicants, but most of those applicants either don't make it through the selection process or they wash out in the first 30 days. And then the third element of the recruiting system is in-person face-to-face recruiting. And COVID has made that much more difficult, but our data show that for example, the number one place to recruit in the community is, is on campus for four-year schools of nursing. And so building relationships with those nursing schools and our members tell us that nursing students make ideal caregivers while they're going to nursing school and you have to work around their schedule and around their uh, class time, uh, but, but they make really loyal, dedicated caregivers and when they graduate and become nurses, they make good referral sources. Uh, so we think everybody should be recruiting at four-year schools of nursing. And then you have two-year nursing schools and associate degree programs and training programs for other uh, ancillary services within the healthcare continuum. And so those students make good caregivers. Um, and then there's a whole other set of community opportunities, uh, what we call faith-based recruiting, connecting with churches and places of worship, um, networking with what we call centers of influence, 
uh, who are the individuals in a community that influence others. Um, and, and so the combination of the three prongs, the employee referral program, the digital recruiting, and face-to-face in-person recruiting are the things that these companies do that, that work. Um, the third system then is what we talked about earlier, the caregiver quality selection system. And this is where we look at identifying the characteristics of our best caregivers and then figuring out how to identify that in applicants. So we look at attitude, we look at behavioral patterns, we look at previous work history. And one of the things that we've been working on is a culture fit interview where we take the core values of the company and build a specific uh, interview uh, template so that we're asking these applicants questions that relate to the core values of the company and a match with the core values of the individual. Um, because we always say hire for attitude and train for skills. If we can get the caregivers with the right attitudes and the right values, the right work ethic, then we can teach them how to do this work. Um, the fourth system is the caregiver quality onboarding system. And we're realizing that that to create, to set the stage for a career as a caregiver, that first day on the job, when they go through orientation and training, uh, really uh, creates the experience. And so looking at all the things that happen on that day and make it, making it less about filling all the paperwork and signing all the forms and more about introducing them to the company and helping them feel engaged and, and feeling like this is a place that they would really want to work. And then the fifth uh, system is the caregiver quality retention system. We talked about 90-day retention. And uh, so the other part of the system is the ongoing after 90 days. What are the things that we do to help people feel valued and appreciated? And what we've learned from all of this is that and we created this new mantra that says money matters more in recruiting than it does in retention. Hmm. Um, that people don't leave for more money. They leave because they're dissatisfied with something that's happening in the job. And so then they go out and look and the answer they get is, well, I got a better job. And it feels like they, they, they went for more money. Now, I will say that going back to our conversation earlier, if they're not, it's not the hourly rate as much as if they're not getting the hours that they want and need, so therefore their paycheck is not what they want and need, then they will look for other work. But if somebody's getting 40 hours a week and they're engaged with their client and they feel good about their supervisor and they're making $12 an hour, it's unlikely they're gonna go look for a job to make 1250. Right. But if they're unhappy with their supervisor, if they are unhappy with the client that they're working with, um, if they're not getting enough hours, that's when they go out and start looking for that next job. Fantastic. Wow. I mean, this is a really, really great system and a program based around, you know, really five operating mechanisms and, and all that. It really does tie together. And, and I, I can see how, you know, the mastermind companies that have embraced these things and made them happen and, and then they share with their peers and, and make these uh, improvements and continuous improvement. That's why they're at the 15% growth as compared to the industry being under 5%. So that's really great. So let's um let's kind of move a little bit into a bit of the home stretch here, and I know that uh, although you've historically brought on these CEO mastermind groups, that you're really you know doubling down on caregiver quality assurance. And uh, do you have like a mastermind group in that area, or, or any other you know kind of uh, master classes or any what what's going on in that arena? Well, we do, and um, we we rolled out the caregiver quality assurance program in February of this year, 2021 with our first caregiver quality mastermind group. And this is a group right now, we have about eight companies in there. We're gonna get to about 12 and then we'll form a new group and a new group. And basically those groups come together uh, once a month by Zoom video to share ideas, to solve problems and to support one another, specifically as it relates to caregiver recruiting and retention. And then we also offer uh, at the beginning of each month, what we call the Caregiver Quality Town Hall. And that's more of a, an educational session uh, where we present new information, new research, new data, and then we put them in uh, breakout rooms and give them an opportunity to have discussion amongst themselves. 
So they really have twice uh, a month the opportunity to come together with their colleagues. Uh, and then they also have access to our online learning platform, which has uh, five courses and each course has seven lessons. So we're, we're still building that out. So we've got lots of content so that they can send new people in their company through that online learning. So if they get a new recruiter, they can go through the, the lessons and the modules um, if they wanna go back and have a refresher because of something we've talked about in the mastermind group. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're actively uh, promoting that. Uh, to be a member of the mastermind group, company has to be doing at least a thousand hours a week or more um, because we found that, that the value of the mastermind is the interaction and the engagement and so we want companies that have been doing this for a while and that have a proven track record. And so the thousand hours a week is sort of the, the cutoff for the newer, smaller companies that don't yet qualify for the mastermind group. We will be offering in the fall uh, our caregiver quality master class. And this is going to be a six week live virtual class where they can come and uh, get the information from each of those five systems that I talked about. And then the sixth course will be about the caregiver quality marketing system. And it's basically how you use caregiver quality assurance as a marketing tool to persuade referral sources and prospective clients that your company is different from the other companies in the local marketplace. And uh, so we'll be kicking that off in September. All right. So these are some great offerings. And before we come back to how people get in touch with you and how they could get uh, engaged with you and sign up for these offerings, I did pick up, you know, a few times earlier, and I meant to ask this a moment ago, is that, you know, by the time you paid for, let's say, your Indeed.com, you brought somebody through, you've done some onboarding training and that type of thing, and then they, let's say, don't stick with you, <clears throat> um, do you have, like, any thought on how much it costs to bring somebody on and lose them in 30 days? And and you actually, and I'd love for you to tie that back to, you know, you, you, you mentioned that a lot of programs, they say they have an employee referral program, but maybe the, maybe they're not really um, putting enough into that. Like what, you know, what are, what are some numbers around that? Well, um, we, a, a number of years ago, uh, we, we created a tool called the bad hire calculator. And it's basically an Excel spreadsheet where you can plug in real numbers. You can put in your hourly pay rate for your caregivers, you put in your hourly pay rate for your supervisor, for your recruiter, uh, you put in your unemployment comp rate, you put in your uh, workers comp rate, some other information that's specific to your company. And from that, it calculates the cost of a bad hire. And last time we did that with real numbers, it came out to $1,575 uh, out of pocket per caregiver. And so if a company has 100 caregivers and um, last year 64 almost 65 percent of them left times fifteen hundred dollars well you do the math and what's that right ninety five thousand dollars or some number like that of, of real dollar cost that uh, it costs you to have this level of turnover so when you start looking at it that way then you can f afford to invest in some of these other uh, principles you ask about the employee referral program and all of the data that we have, not only here in the United States, but we have a colleague in Cornwall, England, that does a lot of work in the home care world in, in, in the United Kingdom. And he's done a lot of re research and all of the data point to the fact that caregivers that come to you through an employee referral program tend to stay with you about 10 times longer than those that come through indeed.com or another online job server. And, and so then we look at, well, what are the elements of an effective employee referral program? Well, the first is you gotta promote your program to your employees on a regular basis and let them know about it and remind them of it. And then the second is you have to pay a meaningful incentive, dollars and cents. And then the third is you need to celebrate the success of it and celebrate the people who are participating so that others will uh, get the idea and they will agree to participate. And so we've been really looking at how and when to communicate that. And we're saying you need to be reaching out to your all your employees at least once a week. And the more specific you can make the information, the better. So you can send a note to everybody that says, 
um, we just have a new 24-hour uh, case and we need uh, two, two caregivers to work the evening shift. And it's located in this zip code, if you know anyone who might be willing to do this. Or um, we have a number of uh, clients with openings in this particular community or this particular set of zip codes. If you know anyone who lives nearby who might like to do this. So the more specific the information you can send to your current employees and encourage them to reach out. Then the second part is paying a meaningful incentive. And we did a best caregiver study two years ago and learned at that time that, that the, the number that made it meaningful was $100. Now we're seeing companies paying more than that. Uh, a lot of companies are offering a $250 incentive up to 500. We saw one that was 1,000. Um, and and they're, be, they're getting some traction by offering those kinds of uh, incentives. And, and what we realize is that not all of your employees are going to participate. There are a few who will participate a lot. You know, one, one member told us about um, having a caregiver who had referred eight other caregivers, and she was making almost as much in employee incentives as she was for her own paycheck. And uh, so finding those folks like that who believe in your program, letting them know where you're looking for caregivers, giving them a meaningful incentive, celebrating them, you know, taking their picture, making a video, putting it out on your employee newsletter, whatever you do to promote and encourage that. And, and the companies that have built meaningful programs are finding that they can get a significant number of caregivers from employee referrals and they tend to stay long. Right. And the math in home care, I mean, some of the math in home care is not the best math on the planet in terms of what rates we can charge and the margins and things like that. But if you do look at the fact that a bad hire, let's stick with that old number, costs us $1,575 and a good hire that comes from a referral could stick with us 10 times longer. And then we look at the fact that, you know, just going back to the anecdotal example you gave of the caregiver working 40 hours a week and maybe making $11 an hour and after their deductions, they're getting around $400 a week. So uh, if I get an extra week of pay, I mean, that's that's a pretty good incentive. So I think uh, you're right. It's, it's not like it's going to break the bank. You know, $250 to $500 sounds like a pretty good price to pay for somebody who's going to stick around 10 times as long and have a friend in the company and, and contribute to the culture and all those types of things. So I think that's a great uh, point to, to finish up on. It looks like you grabbed something there. Was that because you wanted to well, so I was just trying to the Home Care Pulse benchmarking study. I always keep a copy right here behind me in my credenza, and you mentioned the, the cost to hire. And, and in here, they actually, in their data, show the average cost to hire for the different sources. So uh, word of mouth, employee referral programs, uh, ad advertising of various forms, online, including Indeed.com and My CNA Jobs. And so when you look at the number of applicants you look at the cost per hire, you look at the turnover ratios, it really helps you narrow in on those methods of recruiting that are gonna be more effective for you. Fantastic. All right, well, listen, why don't we end then with, if people wanna, I think people who have listened to this podcast are gonna say, wow, there's a lot of value here. There's a lot of value in having the programs, the structures, starting from the culture, I think a lot of people are going to want to get in touch with you, and we haven't really shared how to do that. So how do people get in touch with you to learn more about these great programs? Well, the two websites that are most useful and meaningful uh, would be, number one, caregiverquality.com, and that will take them to a brand new website for our Caregiver Quality Assurance Program and give information about the Caregiver Quality Mastermind Group. The other website is homecareceo.com, and that takes us to the Home Care CEO Forum and information about our CEO mastermind groups. And we uh, have just added some new people, but we actually had four of our mastermind members sell their businesses in 2020. And so we do have a, a, a couple of openings, uh, and I think there's at least one opening in each of our four groups. Uh, so anyone who's between uh, 1.5 million in, in revenue and up. Our largest mastermind member is 38 million uh, in revenue and each of the four groups are organized by size. So we have a group that's one and a half to three million, a group that's three to six million, a group that's five to 12 million and another group that's eight to 38 million. 
and nobody in those groups competes with anybody else in the group mm -hmm. uh, so that they can come together, they can share ideas, they can solve problems, they can, uh, we, we do our own benchmarking and they can really dig deeply without the fear that their competitor around the corner is listening in on the conversation. So those groups have been together. Our first group started in 2013 and, and two of the charter members are still in that group and uh, the other groups have built on since that time. And so whether uh, your listeners wanna be involved in a CEO mastermind group or whether they wanna focus on caregiver recruiting and retention, one of those two websites, caregiverquality.com or homecareceo.com will get them to us. Fantastic. And with that, we'll wrap it up for today. And thank you very much, Stephen Tweed, for being on the program. Really forward to speaking to you again soon. Well, thank you, Ken. I appreciate what you're doing for the industry. Thanks for joining us today on the Home Care Heroes podcast. Home Care Heroes is produced by Ancoda, the software for the heroes of home care. You can listen to back episodes by visiting forhomecareheroes.com. That's the number four, then the words homecareheroes.com.